Welcome back to another video. We're finally outside. It's 70 degrees outside here in Virginia. And I'm gonna give you guys a walkthrough of the Old Town Autopilot 120 um, and what I've done to mine and everything. So this is one of those rigged videos where I may explain some of the things I did and why, but uh, let's hop in from bow to stern. All right, so starting at the bow, obviously I've added this Minn Kota handle our old town handle. This used to be this handle right here, the one that pulls your motor up. I bought this Minn Kota one. I have a video on this mod on this channel and they're the same exact handle. One just says Minn Kota. This is for like bass boat Minn Kota motors. So I just stuck that on the Minn Kota pull up and then I used the old town one up here because I'm OCD like that. Tie around this handle. So now I have a nice handle that isn't like this. It's like this and it's out in front of the boat, so it makes it really easy to pull around. And uh, it's worked pretty good so far. Also have the Yak Power lights. These are the navigation lights because this is a motorized vessel. In Virginia, you have to register it, which means you have to have navigation lights. So obviously got the 45 pound thrust Minn Kota with uh, autopilot. Right here, I've got my phone grip. Um, if I'm floating the river or something like that, or if I'm listening to music or podcast, or you know, if I'm using some kind of navigation like Navionics app on my phone or something like that, I can put it right here. And this is the Yak Power light switch system. This is the five five button wireless system. So. That controls these button lights here for if, you know, in low light situations where I need some extra light, as well as these navigation lights and that flag in the back. We'll get to that when we get to the back of the boat. Um, I usually keep my phone either in the dry storage or right here. Uh, just odds and ends stuff here. Use spent baits here. I don't really use this one because I reel left-handed. So I use that one more than this one. Um, I use both cup holders whenever. Usually keep my tackle here. I have a black, a black pack in the back, we'll get to that. But I usually do keep my tackle here. Um, at least what I think I'm gonna use that day. So two or three, four, possibly of uh, the 3600s go here. Obviously my battery would go there. I have a 100 amp hour lithium amped outdoors battery. On this side, I've got my Garmin 73 SV. It's a good, I think three years old now. Got no plans on upgrading that. I don't need anything more than what that has as of right now. Then I've got my little Yak Attack uh, leash, my Cast King pliers. Uh, I usually throw spent baits or odd and in tools there. Also got a fish grip on a leash, uh, and that's all set up with a, I think it's a one and a half inch ram ball. And here, I'll walk around to the other side. You can use a step drill bit. I think this is an inch and a third. When you buy this, it'll tell you what size you need. But I would get a step bit because this is already a hole. You can't really use a paddle bit. It will jump all over the place and mess your kayak up. If you use a step bit, you can shove it down to where it fits and then bore it out even more because you're gonna need to do that for something like this. Uh, one of these caps popped off, but the other one didn't, so I still ended up needing to do that. Plus this is just much easier with bigger wires and stuff. A little pro tip, as you can see, that's all dielectric grease pulling out of that. I fill it up every so often and plug it in there. Um, that's to prevent rust and all that. On this side, I have the Bending Branches Angler Ace telescoping paddle. And uh, I use that mainly for shallow water and rivers, mostly rivers. Shallow water, the Minn Kota actually does pretty good. You can get into about a foot or less, then it starts hitting, but about a foot or less of water I would say eight inches to a foot is what you would get out of it. Uh, you got your safety switch here. I keep the little line cutters on the seat. Um, I have one on the pliers too. 
and then I have my snips here, which are my main ones, but if I can't get to them or whatever, or I just need to hit it real quick, then I've got that. I'm gonna keep it folded down. So I got my snips there. One of the things that frustrates me about the autopilot, there's very few, but this thing gets wrapped around. Yeah, I went the wrong way. The seat can get wrapped the wrong way. There we go. Now it's straight. Also, that. This really annoys me about this kayak. They should have just moved, it. there's like a little divot here. This should have just been flat with this side and brought all the way up and just moved over just a little bit and it wouldn't rub. I mean, you literally have to sit in the seat just right because it'll rub the, all the way up. Anyway, so in here I keep my remote when I'm not on the water, my safety key when I'm not on the water, registration for the boat because it's registered. Uh, I've got my little salt strong scissors they sent me with the membership and a floaty for a phone or whatever if I want to add it to anything I got with me. And then here I have the Minn Kota puck that I have synced up. So this lets you, I think it's called jog, where it basically moves you like five feet in a certain direction when you hit the button on the remote while in spot lock. So you can be spot locked and then hit that button and it moves you over five feet and you're still spot locked. Okay, so we got these pads, because this is just bare plastic when you get this kayak. And A, that's loud, and B, I kind of feel like that may end up over time damaging the plastic on the hole right there. So I had this spare like sea deck or uh, marine mat material laying around, and I just cut some squares for the high and low on both sides. It makes it way quieter when you sit down, as well as just kind of protecting that plastic right there on that boat, on your boat. Now on the back of the seat, I got a Hobie bag. I got this for Christmas one year from my brother-in-law and I keep, you know, just random baits, first aid. I throw my keys and wallet and stuff like that. It's a little rag, um, any kind of odd tools that I would need, um, spare prop, stuff like that, all goes in that. Stuff that I don't need often, but when I do need it, I have it, and it's out of the way. So back here, I got a donkey leash. Um, just keep that back here if I ever need it. You got your little plug for when you go paddling and leave the motor at home. I've got this bungee here. Now my line cutter's floating net has a carabiner on it. It just connects right to this, and I set it in this rod holder. So this just gives me a little extra wiggle room for the net and so I don't lose it. Next up we got something I recently added over the winter is this boondocks landing gear. This is the groovy edition. Um, I have the long backing plates from here to here and it actually wasn't that bad. I've installed them on pro anglers and outbacks and I would say this is probably easier than either one of those Hobies that I've installed these on whether that be the pro angler 12 or 14 or the new outback. Uh, the 2019 plus outback because you have this little compartment down here that you can reach up in and, and actually grab the back plate now this is interesting because i mean it's nice with the groovy because you can these aren't mounted to this knuckle is what they call this these side brackets are independently and they're on a track so i was able because of the shape of the boat tapers i was able to line the plate up right in the middle here and just offset these two. If you can see that, they're slightly offset. This one on this side is pulled this way. Um, and that's just make sure that, you know, my plate is middle of this ridge here. And so far it's been great. I haven't seen any kind of warping or cracking or anything like that that would give me, you know, pause about using this. Um, a little pro tip, the same door ease stick stuff that you rub on the shaft of your motor, 
See, it looks, looks a little like waxy or greasy there. That's to keep this smooth going up and down. And you can see it's got like wax right there. Every so often I, I put that door ease wax stick, rub it up and down the shaft. It makes that super smooth. That tip comes from Ryan Lilly at Old Town. Um, I also use it on my boondocks because metal on metal tends to grab. So I take that door ease and I rub it on these arms. So this is also waxy, you can see fingerprint. Um, and that really helps with the sliding in and out of these where they don't bite and grab each other because it's metal on metal. Um, back here I used to have the Yak Attack uh, rod holders, the lock and load rod holders. Um, I'm probably going to move those around, maybe put one in the front or something like that, put a few on my wife's kayak because I ended up just preferring having a black pack. Even though my tackle is mostly up here, I can throw my uh, overflow tackle in here along with camera gear and you know a bottle of water or whatever. Um, if I'm fishing for crappie or if I'm fishing inshore, I usually bring an Ingle uh, cooler that's got four rod holders on it. Um, and that's just basically to have a cooler. I also have a Columbia bag cooler that fits right here. So I may not end up using the Ingle cooler that much anymore because the bag you can fit, you know, more fish and bigger fish. But most of the time, a little cooler here in my big water, Yeti water bottle sits in here. And it actually works out nice that this uh, bar here for the boondocks, I didn't think I was going to like it because it broke up the tank well. But it's actually kind of nice because it keeps the cooler and the water bottle up here and then like my tackle and stuff back here. And it's not like all banging around and stuff. So right now it's empty. Yeah, I put some marine mat material on that to make it quiet and these new canoe hinges. So you can actually open and close it fairly easily and have it hold position. So yeah, we got the Sea Tug wheels. Those are the ones that come standard on this. I also have the longer arms with the beach wheels for when I go saltwater. Um, it's just nice to have that option. Here we got the lock and load boom stick from Yak Attack. I just got this. I haven't even used it yet, but I'm hopefully gonna give a little bit better camera angle, a little bit higher so you can see more versus the rail blazer one that I had that wasn't very long and it kind of gave you like an over the shoulder shot and you missed a lot of stuff that wasn't in frame. This is way higher up. I'd say it's probably 50% longer, maybe twice as long. And uh, hopefully that gives you a better shot of over my shoulder, kind of over my head and, and see more of what I'm looking at. Uh, and then we have just a little bungee right here. Todd right here. This is where I hook my carabiner, my flag onto when I am towing or having it in the bed. Um, we got the Yak Power flag. So this folds or this breaks apart into three pieces and goes inside this bag. And then I just keep the bag and the front hatch carabiner to the rope that holds that front hatch lid on. So yeah, somebody asked me how I wired this up right here, because there's no plates or anything back here. You have this hatch right here. I just drilled the little three quarter inch hole that they recommend for this plug, for this base. And then you fish your wire that's connected to the base into the hole. And I just kind of bent it. And it's a pretty stiff wire. So I just kind of bent it and then forced it this way and that way. So I was hitting this sidewall and just coming right up here. And then once I was able to get to like here, I mean, I didn't have to go far from there to there. Once I got it to around this area here, I could just reach in the hatch with my arm and grab it and pull. So it really wasn't that hard. You don't need to drill a hatch in the back back here. You kind of just feed it in like that and push it forward and hope for the best. Uh, just make sure you bend it with a slight bend so when it hits the bottom of the kayak it starts to go that way and yeah then i just pulled it tight screwed it and everything works good it's got a little rubber seal that goes on the bottom there and then you have a cap attached to that rubber seal when you're not using it you can plug your electrical port
But yeah, so this is going to be a longer video, uh, but that is my Old Town Sportsman Autopilot 120 from bow to stern as of the end of March 2021. I don't have very many plans to change it. It basically is the way I want it. And uh, this is the first kayak in a long time that I haven't wanted to switch kayaks or change or mod or whatever. I think it comes pretty good from factory. Um, you add a cart and you're wiring in a fish finder and you're good. So with the boondocks, the yak power system and my Garmin and an amped outdoor battery, I'm pretty set on this and it's probably gonna stay this way for a long time. Uh, it may change layout wise on where I mount stuff, but accessory wise, but that changes all the time anyway, uh, depending on what you're doing. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Maybe it gave you some ideas on what to do to your Old Town Autopilot or what's capable of doing on an Old Town Autopilot. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.